What's up everyone? Alex here. Every time someone brings up playing co-op RPGs with friends, I always think fondly of the SNES era. The MMO genre has emerged since then, allowing an almost infinite amount of players to group together to experience an equally infinite amount of storylines. But I've always thought that it'd be cool if there was an RPG that wasn't an MMO that allowed me to play with my friends and experience an epic journey together from beginning to an actual end. Fast forward a few decades later, and I thought my prayers would never be answered. Unbeknownst to me, however, was a series that had been doing just that for as long as I've pined for this kind of experience. I'm of course talking about the Tales series. The multiplayer aspect of the Tales games is something that's already well known to many fans of the series, but is something that's not often talked about in discussions surrounding later games. It's so understated that while playing through Tales of Vesperia's re-release, that I only remembered that the game had multiplayer because I was looking through the game's button configuration, surprised to find that it showed not one, but four different button configurations. Yes, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition can be played by four players locally. In fact, almost every single Tales game, for the exception of Legendia in the portable games, all had multiplayer. Now, I can hardly call myself a longtime fan of the series. After all, the only Tales games I have are Tales of Zillia, a game that I got as a PS Plus freebie, Tales of Berseria, a game that I've yet to finish, and Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition, which came out recently. That said, thanks to its multiplayer, I've been playing close to 80 hours of Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition since its release, across two different save progressions in fact. Given that Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition is considered as one of the best starting points in the series, as well as one of the more beloved games by series fans, I'd like to show you just how the multiplayer works in the game, with the hopes that you'll either try the game and its multiplayer out, or any of the other games in the series. Getting multiplayer to work with Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition isn't as obvious as you might think. In order to enable the second, third, and fourth controllers requires the first player to set the arts mode for the second, third, and fourth player slots respectively to semi-auto or manual, which tells the game to hand over the controls of the character to the players. What this means is that there will be parts of the story, especially near the beginning, where you'll have less than four party members, which can be a problem if you're trying to play it with four people at the same time. That said, the game will quickly add in more party members upon progressing the story, so you can play the game with a full group. Thanks to the PS4 share play functionality, any one player in your friends list can join you in your game and play as the second player remotely without having to own the game, though they won't be able to see certain parts that are blocked by the game for broadcast. It's not a perfect solution to play Tales games online, but it's a clever way to enable online gameplay without having to wait for the developers to actually make an online multiplayer mode for the games that are on the PS4. All of the multiplayer action happens during battle, and it's at this point that all the players are able to access menus and pause the game to either force other CPU characters to use certain abilities, items, or to alter the AI's strategy. This can be a bit jarring though, given that it will pause the game for everyone without warning, so I found it to be important for players to communicate any need to pause or unpause the game. It's quite frustrating when you're trying to finish a huge combo, only to have another player pause the game because they need to use an item, then unpause the game without warning, making you drop the combo you were doing. When not in battle, it is the first player's responsibility to make sure that all characters have the right equipment, abilities, and skills necessary for them to perform in battle. While one can argue that the multiplayer features in the Tales games still fall into the category of novelty, I vastly prefer this kind of multiplayer experience than that of more recent games that say that they want to preserve the single player experience by limiting other players' involvement in the player's playthrough. The Tales games manage to preserve the pureness of its single-player experience by still allowing other players to join at whim in order to help out, which can also spark discussion and interest that wasn't there before. And while the multiplayer functionality isn't always perfect, there have been times that I wish Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition's camera was much better, the option is still there to be had, and in a genre that's generally focused on solitary experiences, it's nice to be able to share the feels and emotions from time to time. And with that, I hope that if you've never played a Tales game or have tried to co-op, that you'll check it out after watching this video. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you like what you watched, please consider supporting me by liking and sharing the video, posting a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell icon so you won't miss any of my new videos. Also, follow me on Twitter at MyBacklogBattle for the latest updates on upcoming videos, or to just chat about video games. Thanks for stopping by, and let's all have fun playing video games.